So for this, we have different patching solutions from Manage Engine because here we are talking about multiple OSs, your Windows, Mac, Linux, and then we are also talking about third-party applications. And also we're talking about endpoints, not just in your local network, not just in your branch office, but different remote locations spread wide across the world. So you as a system administrator, you as an IT professional, or you as a CIO, you will have to make sure that all these endpoints across different parts of the world, across different countries that your company might be managing, across different OSs, different OS platforms that you use in your network. With all these verticals, you need to have one single solution that can help you patch not just your OSs, but also your third party applications. And remember, it should be a standalone application at an affordable price as well. With this thought in mind, with this notion to make patching easy and simple for you, Manage Engine has come up with different patching solutions because you know securing against vulnerabilities is a complex process and you need to have a simple standalone solution which can help you with a centralized patch management process. So we are here talking about complete automation. So when you have too many devices to manage, then automation is what is going to make your job easy as a system administrator. So we are talking about a set it and forget it kind of automation where you just tell us what are the patches that should be deployed and we can take care from scanning to detection to deployment until reporting. All of these processes can be automatically handled by Manage Engine solutions. So let me show you how. We have one of the best of the breed features, automate patch deployment. So this is where now I've landed on Patch Manager Plus, which is a point product of patching from Manage Engine. So let me log into this product and show you the features that we have available. So one minute, let me log into the product. So as you can see, I have logged into Patch Manager Plus. So we have different tabs available here. And as you can see, I have landed on the home page and you have several graphs that gives you details about how secure your network is. You can view the network status of your of all your endpoints, the security, the health status of all your endpoints right from this home page. And also we have the latest security news feed where you can get to know about critical updates critical vulnerability information or any important update that has been released not just by microsoft but linux mac and your third party <coughs> applications as well so let me show you where we have automate patch deployment right under the patches tab in the left hand side you can find all the patches the reports the views that are available with respect to your patches under the systems you have all reports that are provided with respect to your systems so let it be a report of vulnerable systems or let it be a report of your healthy systems. Or let it be a report of your system health policy. So all these are available. And then under the deployment section, you can find automate patch deployment. So in the deployment tab, you can find the automate patch deployment option. So in the left hand side, let me click on automate patch deployment. So this was one of the best features that I was talking to you about, which helps you to enable a set it and forget it kind of automation, complete automated patch management process. Remember, I'm talking about a process from scanning all your machines to detecting the missing patches in them, downloading the patches, deploying the patches and then also sending reports to your higher authorities about the patch deployment process. This is what the automate patch deployment feature is capable of performing. So let me click on automate task for you. 
Here, as you can see, you have an option to create a task for your Windows machines, one for your Mac machines, and another one for your Linux machines. Let me click on Windows. So we have four stages as displayed here, four simple stages where you will have to furnish the details and we will create an APD task for you. That's how we name it, Automate Patch Deployment or APD. So what are these four stages? Number one, you tell us what applications to patch. Let it just not be limited to Microsoft, but be it any third party applications or be it your Mac and Linux. So any application that you'd like to patch, you can select it from our list. The second stage is where you tell us how you want to carry out the deployment. Would you like to customize it according to your business requirements? Would you like to customize a deployment only for your marketing folks? Would you like to customize a deployment that will be carried only during the weekends? Any kind of customization is possible using a deployment policy. Number three, you tell us who are the targets for whom the patches need to be deployed to. So the third stage is where you select the target computers to which the patches have to be deployed to. And the last stage is where you configure notifications and receive reports on the status of the task regularly. So four simple stages. Number one, tell us what to patch. Number two, tell us how you want the patching process to be carried out. Number three, you tell us to whom to patch. And number four, you tell us to know how successfully the patch deployment process has been carried on. So here I'm, I've landed on the select application stage. You can select all the updates according to their severity level that you would like to patch. Coming down, we have a section where you select applications that you would like to patch under third-party updates. Coming down, you have an option to select the deployment of patches for antivirus definition update. So if you're done with a select application stage, then you can move to the choose deployment policy stage where you select the deployment policy of your choice. So there has, as you can see, there are several policies that have already been created. Let's choose, for example, the weekend policy. So the weekend policy says that the deployment will be carried only on the weekends. And the deployment window has been set from this time to this time. And the deployment will be initiated at either during the system startup or refresh cycle, whichever is going to happen earlier. Now, this is where you select the policy using which the deployment has to be carried on. Here, you can find a suspend task after option. Now, let's say you would like to end a patch deployment task after the month of September. You can always choose to suspend your task. This will be available where you can go and revoke the suspension that you had created on this task. So you can make use of the suspend task option if required. The third stage, as you can see, is where you're going to choose the targets to whom these patches have to be deployed. To. So the first thing that's required out of you is to choose an entire remote office, say my complete branch office at New York or your entire domain. It could be, for example, the whole domain of Zoho Corp. So you first choose the main level target of a complete remote office or a domain, and then you can filter targets based on different categories. Let's say, for example, I am choosing the entire domain of Zoho Corp. Let me filter my targets based on different categories. So in my domain, I could choose maybe a custom group of machines. So I have created a custom group of patch test machines. Or maybe you could select a category based on IP range. This would mean that from X IP range to Y IP range, all the computers that fall in this IP range will have the patches deployed. Or let's say I choose another category of only my operating system. Maybe you can create, maybe I can choose Microsoft Windows 10 and all the computers that have Windows 10 will have these patches deployed. So this is the beauty of the target section. You have an option to filter computers based on different categories. Also, you have an option to exclude targets. Maybe let's say I would not want the patches to be deployed to my custom group of server machines. So I could select custom group. I can have a group created only for my server machines and I can exclude them from having these patches deployed. So this is how the third stage works. And the last stage, as you can see, is where you're going to choose how frequently you would like to receive the reports 
If you would like to receive reports in the first place, then you can go ahead and select these check boxes. You can choose the frequency of how frequently you would like to receive the report. So the prerequisite is where you configure your mail server settings. Once you've given the email address here, then all of the reports about this particular task that you create will be sent across as a mail every now and then according to the frequency that you set. So now when I click on automate patch deployment, all the tasks that have been created so far will be available here. So you will have a holistic view of all the automate patch deployment tasks that have been created, the deployment option that they work on, the status of these tasks and how many targets are being deployed with patches using this task. All these details are available here. And under Actions tab, you have an option to modify different settings. The four stages that we were talking about, all of these could be modified right from this view. Or you can clone this task with or without targets if you would like to have another copy of the same task. You can resume suspended tasks, like I said. You can also choose to delete a task according to your requirements. So this is how an automate patch deployment feature can help you solve all your patching needs with complete automation. But the patching problems of a sysadmin does not just stop with automation. You have a lot of scenarios for which we have solutions. So based on customer feedback, based on a support technician's advice, we have come up with a few scenarios for which we would like to offer solutions from our patching products. So when you consider if you're a system administrator, you have a lot of what if scenarios that you need to process before deploying a patch. What if the patch fails on an end machine or what if all my systems collapse due to a problematic patch? Remember, we had to face a downtime because of the meltdown updates that Windows had released. We would never want the same condition to happen again. So how can you ensure that all the patches are stable before you roll them out to your production environment, especially your servers. You have an option to test and approve your patches. In the left-hand side, again, under the deployment section, you have an option to test and approve. So I have the workflow given here very clearly. All you have to do is create test groups of machines. Remember, when you create a test group, you need to include all the machines such that they simulate the environment that you operate in. All the versions of Windows should be included in the test group so that you do not miss out on testing the patches on all versions of Windows. So once you create test groups, you can choose the patches that need to be tested in these machines that are belonging to a particular test group. So once the patches are successfully tested, then they will be taken for deployment. Let me quickly show you how you can create a test group and choose the patches that need to be tested. So again, you have an option to test and approve patches for all your Windows machines, Mac and Linux. So as I said, complete cross-platform support is available both with Desktop Central and Patch Manager Plus. So all you have to do is choose a test group. Let's say I choose the group Patch Test. Now here under the deployment option, I'll select all the applications that I would like to test. Microsoft applications as well as my third party applications. Coming down, I will select the policy using which I would test the patches on the machines. Let's say a weekend policy where the patches will be tested only during the weekends on the machines belonging to this particular test group. Coming down, I have a notification setting where I can choose to receive a notification about these patches that are being tested. Are they tested successfully or have they fail the testing process. And then lastly, I have an approval mode for tested patches. I, if I choose to automatically approve tested patches, say after five days, this would mean that my patches will be tested successfully. They will wait for five days. So this would be a period where we can check the stability of the patches. So once this five day period is over, then these patches will be taken out for deployment. This is to ensure that you offer some period to check if the patches are stable enough in your environment even after you test it. Or if I choose to uncheck this, then all the patches that have been tested successfully will be available under this view. So under test and approve, if you create a group, you can find the patch view where you can 
find all the patches that have been tested and you can manually go and approve them. So the basic bottom line of the test and approve is to carry out the testing process automatically without you having to manually sit, choose pilot machines and then carry out the testing process. Instead, you create test groups for different OSs, for different versions, or even for different updates, and you choose the patches that need to be tested. That is all. The rest is handled by the patch manager class or the desktop central tool. And then the next scenario is about where we usually have customers complaining about applications that are not compatible with the latest version of Java. So this is just one example, but you have a lot of legacy applications which are found to be not compatible with example, the latest version of Java. So what a few developers in my enterprise would feel is if you're going to give me the latest version of Java, then a few applications that I use might crash. In such cases, we would not want to patch a few applications, let's say the legacy applications with the latest updates. For this, we have an option to decline patching to these applications. So under the patches tab, in the left hand side, you will find the decline patch option. Again, with respect to decline patch, it is expected out of view to create a group. For example, let's say all computers group. So this would include all the computers in my network. Here you can select from the list that's provided, you can select the application for which you would like to decline the patches to. In my case, it's Java. So let's choose the family, the entire family of Java patches. Now, when I click on save, this particular decline rule is applied for all the computers in my network. So this is how you can make use of the decline patch option. And this is just not in the case of declining patches to legacy applications it could be to your less critical business applications. It could be when you do not want less severe third party applications to decide the network station, then you can go ahead and decline patching those applications. Last but not the least, customize deployment options with granular control. So like I said, you have deployment policies available in the product which you can use which you can use to customize the deployments according to your business requirements. So under deployment, you will find the deployment policies option. I already have endless number of policies that have been created. Now let me click on create policy. So very recently we had enhanced the UI for deployment policy as well. Now in the deployment schedule, all you have to do in the deployment schedule, all you have to do is just schedule the time from when to when should the deployment happen. So here you have an option to select your preferred days for deployment and your preferred weeks for deployment. So let's say I've selected all the weeks and all the days because it's always good to have your deployment window open all the time because you never know which critical vulnerability has updates released by which vendor. So it's important that you allow the product to let it patch your systems then and there. So here under the deployment window, you tell us from what time to when should the deployment be carried over. And in the pre-deployment settings, you have an option to perform wake online. Let's say you have a critical vulnerability which has to be patched and no systems that are asleep have to be waken up before you carry out the deployment. So you can use the wake online option. Coming down, you have a user notification option. If you would like to tell your end users that a patch deployment is going to happen, you can always choose to notify them using a message. And you can also allow them to skip the deployment. Let's say they are in the middle of a business operation or they cannot be disturbed. Then you can always allow them to skip. And then lastly, we have reboot policy where we have options to customize your reboot or your shutdown.